All right, looks like Facebook is hot. Looks like Zoom is on. We got people checking in on Zoom this morning. Uh, that means the system is working. The internet has survived the weekend uh, and everybody is here. Welcome in. Uh, I'm Ivan, it is nine o'clock central time on Monday morning, the 27th of April. And we will continue on with this webinar program for another exciting week. Two a day, 9 and 11 a.m. every day, uh, Central Time. Um, kind of fallen into a bit of a routine here. I've got an exciting new sponsor that is joining us. I've got exciting new things to share. Ten classes this week, 9 and 11. The morning classes are technical, where we're doing cutting. The 11 o'clock classes are all more business-related topics. There's some really cool subjects we're going to be addressing this week, stuff I'm really excited to be sharing with all of you. Um, today, 9 o'clock, is the Modern Pompadour. We're going to get into a technical haircut. At 11 o'clock, a program I have never shared at a trade show, and I have never shared live on the web. It has only existed in a private video series on my uh, YouTube channel that isn't even published. Uh, it's called Sweet Considerations. And there's a lot of people out there that believe that when we get back from this coronavirus lockdown thing, we get back to business, and there are parts of the country that are already back in business. We're going to get back to business differently, and there are a lot of people that are considering other options, some of which are chair or suite rental. And the Suite Considerations program at 11 o'clock today addresses just that. It asks the question, what are the questions you should be asking you if you are thinking of going it alone? If you are thinking of renting a suite? or renting a chair, essentially owning your own business. And um, there's a lot of different takes on what that's really all about, especially in the wake of the coronavirus lockout and all of that. So that's an exciting program that we're going to uh, jump in and we're gonna share. Um, folks on Zoom, you know how it works. Chat is open, mics are muted. You can unmute if you wish. There will be Q&A at the back end of this for the last eight or 10 minutes. Um, that's kind of standard stuff. Facebook world, you guys are out there. I know you're there. I'm seeing the names fly by and I'm excited and happy to have you here today. Uh, new things. Red, we got a new flavor. I think this one is, yeah, it's a strawberry watermelon. Not my favorite, but I have it upstairs. So we're going to drink it, but we got a new color. It's been blue. It's been purple. Um, I think it was orange, but now it's bright red. In the area of new, I want to welcome to sponsorship of these programs, Jatai International, Jatai International, J-A-T-A-I dot net on the web. Jatai is a company based in California. They are the importer and distributor of, among other things, Feather. Feather razors, feather handles, feather blades, feather products. I've got a couple of programs this week that will specifically feature the feather uh, tools and equipment, and we'll be talking about Jatai. And coming up later, I've got a big fat coupon code for shopping if you wish to shop at Jatai for all of those needs in the razor blade and the razor category and everything else. Really kind of cool. We swapped the banner this week. We've got the big Clipper Guy trade show banner. This is the banner that hangs at my booths at all of the trade shows uh, lately. There's a new one coming on the way with an updated logo. But in the meantime, we've got the Clipper Guy backdrop going on up there. So lots of things happening to keep it fresh, to keep it exciting, and to roll on. Want to continue to remind you, Barbicide, you know the links to the Back to Work plan and the reopening recommendations and Barbicide certification. Is there anybody out there yet who still isn't Barbicide certified? You gotta be. Uh, Barbicide.com, the links for all that. Go to my Instagram, that's Ivan Zoot. Go to my profile, go to my links. All the downloads and the Barbicide certification are right there available to you, totally, totally free. We always start with $100,000 hair cutter. You guys know that. One idea a day, every single day for 365 days. Um, we read the uh, topic of the day. It's your daily devotional to success in the business. That number right there for some people 
That's a hope and a wish and a dream. And for other people, that's a stepping stone on the way to much bigger and better numbers. So we always start with a reading from $100,000 Haircutter. Remember, paper, digital, audio, clipper guy, Ivanzoot.com is where you go to order it. Let's look today at April 27. April 27, day 117 with 248 days remaining in the year. And the Pompadour class that we're going to start with this morning is a technical cutting class. So I think it's great that we also start the day with a technical cutting tip. Taper. That's your tip. Taper. Barbering is all about adding a third dimension to haircuts. And this was explained to me many years ago when I kind of found this a really cool way of understanding a little bit of our difference. All haircuts have length and width. All haircuts have length and width. But barbering is all about adding depth which comes from the tapering at the perimeter. Even if it's a banker's cut where it's finger length all the way around, a subtle taper around the bottom edges adds that dimension or depth. Taper the edges of your haircuts to add a degree of visual depth. Some haircuts carry a heavy deep tapering, others can benefit from subtle tapering at the very edges. Try it to really see the difference it makes. Avoid a blocked look and feel by gently tapering the baseline on all men's haircuts to add this dimension and polish. Haircuts will look better today and every day between now and the next haircut. If you're not good at this, seek the assistance of a classically trained barber to show you how it's done. While building clientele, you'll see a huge payoff if you hone your skills on edge tapering. I think that tapering is really one of the distinctions between what we'll call more of a barbered haircut versus a cosmetology type haircuts. It's some of the essence of true classic barbering skill. And April 27, that's the tip of the day. Now, uh, Melinda tossed up May 8th as a suggestion. You guys know we always take an extra day. And we've talked about this one in the uh, Line and edge class. We're going to talk about it again in the shaving class. Line and edge is 9 o'clock on Tuesday. That's one of the few classes this week that is a repeater. We've got 10 classes this week. 7 out of 10 are brand new content. Thursday is our face shave system. That's a totally new class featuring Jatai. But May 8, day 128, 237. You might want to call this a technical tip, but you may also recognize this to be a customer service or marketing tip. Provide a steam towel finish. A simple steam towel at the neck and on the face transforms an ordinary haircut into a full service spa experience. A steam towel can be prepared with hot tap water or it can be done from a towel warming cabinet. Warming cabinets are inexpensive and well worth the few dollars. A steam towel finish is a great way to justify a price increase in your haircuts. We talk about July 1 price increase day in the USA, haircut price increase day in the USA. I tell people all the time if you want to ease into a price increase, Add something to what you do. Enhance your offerings that you provide your clients, thereby justifying a price increase. And a steam towel, if you're not already doing it, boom, is an easy way to add a couple of bucks to a haircut. Add a drop of essential oil to the water for an additional sensory elevation of the experience. So that's May 8 in the book. When we get to Q&A, if you've got another day or two you'd like to experience, just give me a shout and let me know. Stay home 20 is your coupon code at ivanzoot.com. I'm going to put it up there. This is for ivanzoot.com. It's good for 20% off. Oh, I put a 9 up there. That 9 doesn't belong there. Stay home 20 for 20% off. All right. Um we're going to get into that modern pompadour haircut. That's the technical conversation for this morning. Let me change things up here a touch. I put this little uh, fleece jacket on this morning because it's cold down here. It is cold in Chicago today. Uh, it was cold the weekend. Um, but we'll be warming up sooner than later. All right. This guy's left over from a conversation we had on square layering last week and I think that's a perfectly good segue into our pompadour cut. So I'm going to dampen him just a little bit and then we're going to go into cutting our sort of modern interpretation of a classic pompadour haircut. 
think you guys will enjoy it work with it. And we'll get into our cutting. First things first, for cutting a pompadour, we want to start by square layering the top. We want to start by cutting the top of the haircut in a very symmetrical nature. We're going to end up with an asymmetric top later, but we're going to start by cutting it symmetrically and we'll let the perimeter dictate. That's a Feather Switchblade 5.5. If you don't know your Switchblade scissors, a couple things you do want to know. Number one, that scissors. 33 years old. This scissors was purchased by me originally when I graduated cosmetology school for my first job because I worked for an organization that recommended these. They didn't require, but they recommended the use of switchblade scissors. Check it out. You switch out the blades. That's why they're called switchblades. You literally put fresh blades on and you've got a brand new scissors. The handle on this scissors is 33 years old. The blades have never been sharpened because the blades literally are thrown away. This is actually pretty cool. I throw the blades away twice a year. They go in the sharp spin and I got a brand new blade on there. So let's cut the top. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to establish our top center guide from the front hairline through the top crown. It's going to be a parting. And I've got moisture in the hair. Some of you for scissor cutting in the interest of cleaner partings and better distribution and things like that may prefer to go with a cutting lotion. Uh, cutting lotions can be lightweight gels, can be light mousses, things like that. It adds a little tack. It gives the hair a little cooperation, a little pliability, uh, makes it a little easier to work with, keeps the partings clean. Also, hydration in the hair helps maintain even and consistent distribution which maintains even and consistent tension, which gives us cleaner, more accurate cutting. Roger, you got a hand up? You got a comment? Unmute your mic if you want to contribute. I see you put a hand up there. Top of the head. I'm combing the hair straight up, not straight back and not 90. As I work forward from top dead center, notice I come straight out. That means the hair at the top of the head is going to be shorter than the hair at the front. Remember, it's a pomp. We want to push that front edge up. I go back to top dead center and I continue my horizontal line straight back across the head. I'm not following the curve of the head. I'm not rounding down the head. Everything is drawn straight up and if it doesn't reach, it doesn't get cut. That's my top center guide. I turn my chair 90 degrees. I stand behind my client. I'm now going to elevate sections straight up towards the ceiling and I'm going to do what I call widening my guide. Now you'll notice when I pick that up, I'll pick it up again. There's a short guide in the middle with longer hair on either side of it. Did everybody see that? There was a short guide in the middle with longer hair on either side. I'm going to continue to work my way back through the head in this manner. Combing section straight up towards the ceiling looking for a piece of the previously cut section in my fingers to serve as my guide. I comb it straight up. If there's nothing to cut, I cut nothing. Does that make sense? If there's nothing to cut, I cut nothing. Comb it straight up. Now I'm just continuing left and right out from top center. Every time I grab that, you see my comb is levering perfectly horizontal. Perfectly horizontal. Perfectly horizontal as I come up. My fingers are horizontal, my shears, my switchblades are horizontal, my comb is horizontal. So what I'm looking to do, and now we'll check our work, is I'm looking to take this almost like a really long tall flat top, almost like a really long tall flat top. Now this side was cut shorter during another class, this side is long and is going to go away, but look at the top. Boom. That's what I'm looking for. This is how we set up the top for our pompadour. Now, it is time to make an important decision. I'll be right back. I got to grab something over here. Now, you will either use a styling gel, 
I like to use some wax. This is Clipper Guy Classic Wax. Now I'm gonna take a small amount of Classic Wax, and this is an important part of cutting the top of the hair. I'm gonna take a small amount of my Classic Wax right there. Not a whole lot of it. The hair is damp, the hair's got moisture in it. Yes, I am applying wax to damp hair. That's because I want some pliability, I want some tack, and I want a little bit of what we'll call cooperation. So I'm gonna work this wax into damp hair, primarily focusing on the top of the head. I wanna get that wax in the top of the head like that. Move it around really good where the hair is damp. Now, the reason for this is I am gonna strike my pompadour parting next, and I want that parting to happen and stay where I want it to happen. So I am going to comb that hair back. I'm going to the fine side of my comb for control, going to the fine end of my zoot comb for control, and I'm going to decide where I want that parting. It's an artistic or creative decision. There's no right or wrong on the parting, but you put it where you want it. I'm going to put it right there. Okay, I'm going to comb this over and out of the way. Hey, Zoom folks, let's just keep that mics muted unless you've got a comment. No problem. All right. I've got that distributed. This distribution is going to be key because this is going to be a hard parted pompadour that's going to have some asymmetry at the parting through the top. So I distribute that hair with the parting. By having that wax in the hair, it's going to stay where I put it, which is important for me for my cutting. So step number one was I square layered the top. I flattened out the top, longer at the front like a pompadour, straight back, straight out to the sides. Step number two is I struck my parting with some gel in the hair to distribute the hair evenly. Now I'm gonna pick up a one and a half guard. I wanna go tight through the perimeter. I'm gonna go down to about a one, but I'm gonna start with a one and a half slightly longer. Clipper blade is in the close, closed, or triple zero position. And now, I'm going to stay fairly low. In through the crown area, you can bring this up high or you can keep it down low. I want to keep it down low in the interest of versatility. I have hair to work with. I can make other choices later. But here's what I'm going to do. With my clipper in the triple zero close or close position and a one and a half guard on my clipper, conscious of my parting, I'm going to come in below and I'm going to clipper up to the parietal ridge and I'm going to hang just below the occipital bone, moving around the head. At the side over the ear, and notice I'm watching my parting, I'm watching my distribution. At the side over the ear, I don't want to go up too high. I want to sneak under there, but I want to stay below the curve of the head. Now this particular mannequin doesn't have a lot of hair between the ear and the curve of the head. It's a very narrow area there. So I just want to be conscious of that. Now I'm going to continue around the head. And I'm feeling for the curve of the head. With my one and a half, I'm coming out and I'm staying below that occipital bone. I'm staying below the occipital bone. I'm buying myself some flexibility and versatility for the haircut later by not going too high right now. Uh, yes, I use Clipper Guy Classic Wax, Scott Sales. Absolutely. That's the wax we put in the top. Boom, right there, guys. Clipper Guy Classic Wax. Again, over the ear. This is the heavy side of the parting now. I still am going to lift it up and peek under it just a little, but that's just to know how high I'm going. I don't want to compromise and cut past the curve of the head. And that's a one and a half on that blade. Recap, step number one, we square layered out the top. Step number two, I applied my wax and I struck my parting. I put that hard parting in there to keep hair on either side of the parting. Then I went underneath with my clipper and my one and a half and I kind of gutted out the bottom with a one and a half. Now I want to go into my blending and tapering. 
not, I'm sorry, not tapering. I want to go into my blending. What I want to blend is from the top edge of the one and a half up into that longer interior. Adel, thank you. JRL 1040 is the model on that clipper. You are correct. Now, you can use your zoot comb. You can put a guard on there. I'm going to put a number two guard on my zoot comb. That's equivalent to a number two guard on a clipper. I've got a one and a half at the top here, so it's a little long, but I'm blending up off of it. And now, I'm going to be very conscious of the distribution of the top of the haircut. I'm going to come in at an angle. And I'm going to look to blend off all this overhang, all this longer hair. Okay? I'm using the two guard just to keep me away a little bit. I'll take that guard off and go a bunch shorter in just a bit. But notice, this is where the top on this haircut becomes asymmetric. This is where you're going to get the ability to call it an asymmetric hard part pompadour because we've got the top longer. We've got a hard parting in it, and the hair on either side of the parting is not going to blend. Look at you got a very small hair here that's going to get even smaller, and a much longer hair just to the other side of the parting. That's where we get the idea of it being non-blended and asymmetric at the parting. Now, I've got a bit of a blend going on here, that's fine, but we're going to take that even higher in just a bit. This is where we want to be respectful of crown length and head shape. Because I want to come in below the crown and I want to begin to blend my one and a half up into that longer hair at the top of the head. But what I don't want to do is I don't want to take him too high up into the crown. You know, I have a lot of friends that cut hair in the UK and I really love watching some of what they talk about when they talk about a campaign called Save the Crown. It sounds very, very British. What they're referring to, you hear that smooth out? You hear that noise? The clipper was making noise to me like it was running a little bit dry. That was my indication it was time to get in there with a little bit of oil. So this Save the Crown idea is this notion of not cutting these haircuts too short right here in this crown area, getting them to be sticking up, getting them to be popping out. A lot of times when you look at those haircuts in perspective, they've tapered up and they've flat spotted the crown. And you want to leave that a little longer and a little fuller up into that crown area. Notice I'm holding my clipper comb with my thumb and forefinger. I'm holding my clipper comb handle up, nose down, and I'm coming into that longer top, but I'm leaving that weight or that bulk in through the crown area. Now, I'm not necessarily stating that that's my final intention for the final design. It is possible later I will come in and soften that off even more, but I'm following the philosophy of if I cut it off and I want it later and I don't have it, I'm out of luck. If I save it now for later, I can always take it off later as I continue to assess the shape and how I feel about how that haircut's coming together. Now, in the front corner, I think you want to be careful of this right here. This is part of the top that pumps up, and it's also part of the side, but I don't necessarily want to cut it off yet. I may want to save that, I may want to keep that, I may want to include that. So what I tend to do is throw a gripper in just to protect that corner. Again, it falls in that category of if I cut it off, I can't have it later. But if I save it now, later I'll have it. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to continue my blending. I still have my two guard on here. So what you've seen happen by virtue of having clipped it, I've created a little bit of an undercut in this front corner. And I'm continuing to taper up into the interior lengths. I'm looking for a nice blend here now. I'm going to actually pull the guard down off the zoot comb because if I'm working at a one and a half and my comb is a one, now I really have the opportunity to get in there to get that tapered. Now, as a right-handed hair cutter, I'm above the client's right ear, so I had to work horizontal just a little bit, but as quickly as I can, 
I get back to a diagonal comb position. As a right-handed hair cutter, it's almost impossible not to be horizontal right there over the right ear. That's got a nice blend to it. Looking in through the back, it's a little square here, so I'm just going to endeavor to continue to round this out a bit. Watch my hand position. Below the curve of the head, I'm working overhand with my clipper to keep my elbows down and my shoulders in a comfortable position. That's back to some of that healthy hair cutter conversation. And I'm coming around the opposite side. Now, this is where I'm going to take that asymmetry even stronger. Remember, we've got our parting in place kind of held there with our wax. That's really helping us get that shape there. Now, I'm going to come in with my comb, and I'm going to work on my blending here. But you'll notice, as I work on that, I am rolling the comb, and I'm coming higher and higher up that parting. I'm going past the curve of the head on the light side of the parting. I might even go to the small end of my comb just to chase after some little pieces here and little details. This is going to be that short high side. We're going to let you look at that from the front in just a minute. And notice, I'll comb some of this hair over. Notice how I got a little bit of overhang right there? I'll take a little more of that off. That's exactly right. <laughs> Okay, now take a look at that from the front. This is where we really have Facebook right here, Zoom right there. We really have that asymmetry. If you're having trouble seeing it due to the backdrop, I'll get that towel up there on you a little bit. It really helps with seeing what's happening behind there. But this side has come up past the curve a bit. We've got a really nice blend. Back in through here, we've tapered up and we've retained the length in through the crown right there. We're going to check that out. There's a little bit of fine tuning we need. And the other side is blended nicely. Now, I'm going to take the gripper out of this side. And when I take the gripper out of this side, we're going to see that we've got some overhang on the front corner. You have some choices with that overhang. You can blend it off or you cannot blend it off. That's entirely up to you. Now notice, when I throw it up and in like that, it looks nice and blends in. If he's wearing it down and you get that little bit of loose overhang, that can look pretty cool too. You bought yourself a little bit of what I call styling versatility. So I want to bring in my razor now for one particular finesse here. If this is hanging over on you a little bit more than you like, I actually like the longer length at the front, but back here there's some heaviness to it. I'm going to over direct this back. Now I've switched to my feather freestyle razor with my standard cutting blade, and I'm going to use my razor just to take off that little bit there. Now I still have the loose corner but I've got a much better blend higher up on that. That was my freestyle razor, and Feather makes three different blades for the freestyle. They make the standard blade, which we've all used for many, many years. They make a texturizing blade, which I'm going to use in just a moment. And recently they introduced something called the R-type blade. The R-type blade, R is for rapid cutting. R stands for rapid. That's got 50% more blade exposure. The castellations, look at the two right there, the, the, the spacing on the guard castellations is wider, so it gives you the feel and the behavior of a much more natural, uh, a much more natural non-guarded razor feel with the safety of a guard like that. Kathy, yeah, now the whiter background is a little easier to see than with some of those black letters, and we are working on that. All right. Um, but that really gave you that blending right in through there. Now I'm going to switch to... My texturizing blade on my razor, notice that one. That one's got the guards with the smaller detents in them every other. This one doesn't take out all the hair. This one only takes out a little bit or some of the hair. I've cut in or tapered my perimeter with a one and a half. I did my blending beneath my square layering. Now I'm going to come in with my texturizing blade and what's called a razor rotation technique. This is called razor rotation. I'm using my feather freestyle razor, and what you'll notice is I have the standard blade in the black handle, I have the texturizing blade in the red handle. 
that different handle lets me know which razor has which blade. And you can see when I do this, I'm gently glossing this over the surface of the hair. And my fingers are behind it. My fingers serve as a guard, bump, just like that, bump. They will bump up against the scalp and prevent the razor from digging all the way in. So I'm protected when I do that. This is how I regulate or control how deep that goes in. And when we rotate like that between the comb and the razor and the comb and the razor and the comb and the razor and the comb and the razor, I'm smoothing down that outer surface of the hair, especially in that area where the longer hair transitions into the shorter hair. If you think it makes it look good on a mannequin, you should see what it'll do on a real human. The blending benefit of that is really, really extraordinary. So, we square layered our top. We applied some wax for control. We put in our hard parting. We knocked in our perimeter with a one and a half. We blended up clipper over comb. We isolated the front fringe and we tied it in with a little bit of razor blending at that corner. Now we went in with razor rotation to polish up the blend. And the last thing we're gonna do, I used a one and a half. So now I'm gonna go to a one guard open. At a one and a half, now I go to a one guard open. And I'm gonna use that to just fine tune the perimeter to tighten up the perimeter just a little bit to give us a little more dimension. That was the tip of the day that we read for May 8th when we read from $100,000 hair cutter. We made that reference earlier in the program. I don't wanna leave a line or a mark. This is a one guard open, blended up into that one and a half guard closed that we used before, just to fine tune the perimeter. Now, we're gonna switch to our trimmer and our finishing comb in just a minute to kind of polish up and detail up the bottom of the haircut. I don't wanna lose the camera up there on Facebook. All right, so let's hit the recap. We started out we square layered the top. That was extremely important. It gave us that uniformity through the top of the haircut that when we then applied our wax, struck our parting, and created our asymmetry, it keeps that top long and tall. If I go in there with a blow dryer, I can pop up that front super nice and tall. I can get a really great look on that where we get a little bit of disconnect on that. It gives it some style and gives it some character. So we squared out the top. Wax and a hard parting. The wax was used as a cutting tool to support our cutting efforts, not just as a styling tool. One of the cool things about putting product in the hair during the hair cutting is we put product in the hair to help support our hair cutting efforts. That's nice. But while we're cutting hair, the hair is drying down and it's drying down with the product in it. So once we get to the point where the hair is almost finished being cut, it's dried down with product, it reduces our styling time and it's giving us that finished look. So that was the top. We did our blending clipper over comb, then we did our razor detailing on the front fringe and our razor uh, rotation to do our blending. Then we went to a tighter, shorter guard to tighten up the perimeter. The last thing we really need to do to finish it up is we go back to our zoot comb, we go back to our trimmer now and now we will detail the edges. We had a line and edge detailing class last week. We'll cover more lining and edging this week in more of our technical programming. Now remember, 11 o'clock today is sweet considerations. If you're thinking of going out on your own, if you're thinking of renting a suite, if you're thinking of renting a chair, these are the 10 questions you should ask you. I'm gonna ask you these questions. These are the 10 questions you should be asking you about thinking about going out on your own in the business if that's something that may be an option for you in your future so that you can be prepared, so that there are few surprises, so that you can be really ready to tackle what's going on in uh, that uh, situation and that thought process. Uh, Catherine, love the recaps for note-taking. Yeah, let's you go back through and just uh, 
check in with your notes. Um, what do we have here? Can you recap your decision on the length when squaring off the top? Yes, yeah, Scott, I'll give you that in just one second. Um, now, I'm gonna turn my client away from the mirror. See the mirror over there? And I'm gonna be trimming that neckline, and I'm gonna be looking over my shoulder to assess it in the mirror on the opposite side. Last week in one of the classes, we talked about the importance of using that mirror as a vital haircutting tool. Scott asked the question of the decision on the top. Basically, Scott, there's a couple ways to come up with that. Number one is you can walk backwards from your front length. Based on the amount of curvature to the forehead, and the degree of hairline that the guy's got. So in other words, if you've got a really low hairline and you've got strong curvature at the forehead, you gotta be careful about how long you're gonna leave this, otherwise that pomp's gonna be way too tall. So this is the longest piece of hair on the client. Absolutely longest piece on the hair ahead, even longer than what you've got in the crown. And you want it to come straight back in a plane. So you're gonna make a length decision there that will be carried through to the top. Top dead center is the shortest piece of hair on the top of the head. From the top of the head, the head curves away all the way around, and all of that interior hair got longer working our way out. So the real crucial first decision is, how long is the hair at the front of the edge? Because that front edge is what really is gonna pop up as your pomp. And if it's too long and you gotta come in and take it off later, you don't wanna round down that front. You wanna carry it through horizontally. That'll really give you that square and that masculine shape. So thinning front hairline doesn't work for this client. No, not necessarily a problem. You can have guys that have high recession corners. I'm getting a little high in the corner here. You can have a guy with a very strong widow's peak, or you can have a guy that's high up like that. But keep in mind, if he's more than, you know, a third of the way receded back through the hairline, it's going to be hard to get a real pompadour look on him. He's going to look like he's windblown. He's going to look like he's been on a motorcycle going 130 on a toll road because he's going to be blown away back through the top like that. So, yeah, if their hairline is too weak, the pomp may not be a good choice. Uh, I love doing this haircut. You have taught me so much. Thank you, Joyce. I appreciate that. I love cutting these, too. They're, they're still popular and highly versatile um, and, and a ton of opportunity to cut these like this. Who's got questions on the basic cut? Why did you choose to leave the length in the crown area? Sahara, great question. Sahara from Zoom asked the question, why did you choose to leave the length here in the crown? Styling option in terms of head shape and bone structure. Couple choices. I got a brother-in-law who doesn't have much of a prominent occipital bone. In his haircut, you need to leave length in the crown to create a more rounded cranial shape. Right now, it looks much better on Facebook than you can see it, and there's a little bit of blending needed, right? Ooh, look at that. I gotta blend that off. Who did, why didn't you point that out? Why didn't you guys tell me I needed to blend that? Come on, we're all in this together, all right? There it is, you see that? Dark hair, light combs, light hair, dark combs. This is why you love your zoot comb. It makes life so easy when you can see those things screaming at you like that. But I chose to leave that length in the crown because the object of the game here is strong top, tapered perimeter, rounded out. I'll challenge you to look at a lot of pictures you see on the web, and you'll see right in through here, if I take this too high and I angle this off, there'll be a flat spot. Instead of a curve, there'll be instead of that curve right there, there'll be a flat spot. It throws off the balance, it throws off the aesthetic appeal, and it throws off the geometry on it because of your cameraman and background. Yep, there you go. Uh, absolutely. So... That's why we left that there. Now, could I take it off and take it higher? Yes, I could. I could bevel this off a bit. I could take a bit of that off through the back to soften that a little bit, but I don't want to. I kind of like that fuller feeling in the crown on these, and it's really gonna depend on, I would have told you, but I didn't see it. Thanks, Lizzie. Uh, and it all depends on the client's head shape. Everybody's going to be a little bit different. As an example, if you want to have more of a DA, a pomp on the front and a DA on the back, you're going to want a little more length in through here to be able to wrap that DA in. 
that's a demo for another day, that's a class for another time. But that will really, I mean, and even here, there's enough length that if I put a little more styling product on that, I can get that to hold into a bit of a DA from a styling standpoint. But I think it looks pretty good. Uh, so do you leave a lot of length in the front, like to the eyebrow or nose, to give that pompadour? Yeah, what I don't do though, Robert, or Ronald, I'm sorry, what I don't do, what you never saw me do, for those of you that watched from the very beginning, what you never saw me do was I never combed it down and cut it off. I never ever combed this downward. I combed it all straight up because this was not only straight across, I mean, look when I hold that up, boom. That is dead on straight across. And there's your asymmetry. There's your non-blending jump. This hair and this hair are next door neighbors and they do not blend at all. Jenna, give me a minute, I'll get to your question. I saw your question there. Uh, but this was all cut straight up and straight up. Because when I turn him sideways, notice that line continues straight out. If you comb this down and you blunt it, the hair, the hairline here is going to be shorter than the hair behind it. Length increases opposite the cutting point. So if I comb this down and cut it, the hair right here is shorter than the hair that reached the guideline just behind it. And that is what I do not want. So, a little more moisture to this. Jetta asked the question about what styling instructions would you send them home with? I think that's a fabulous question because that leads to client satisfaction, that leads to uh, client retention, that leads to referrals. You want them going home rocking this. So, number one product. I'm going to make sure this guy goes home with either, depending on his hair type and texture, and depending on how much work he's willing to do. Because this really does need to be blown. You really do need to get in here with a brush and a blow dryer on a daily basis. So, Alice, my friend. Alice Green, Memphis, Tennessee, checking in on Facebook. Good to have you here, buddy. Long time no talk. I hope you are doing well. Um, wax. If he's not going to be a big blow dryer, a wax or a pomade is going to be a great choice for this. He's going to mold sculpt it wet, he's going to towel dry his hair, he's going to apply product, he's going to put it where he wants it, and he's going to head out the door. So if they're not going to blow dry and they're going to mold sculpt, wax or pomade, good choice. But if they're going to blow dry, gel or paste. Now all four of these products, wax, pomade, paste, and gel, are all viable styling products based on how he's going to work with his hair, based on the type of hair he has. If his hair is really curly and he wants to pomp it and blow it out, well, that guy, we're going to put a gel in damp hair, we're going to blow it, and then we're going to put a dry paste in for pliability, hold, and finish. Keep in mind, if his hair is curly, and we blow it dry with a gel, if you then put in a water-based product like more gel, it's going to revert and it's going to curl back up. So once it's dry, at that point you only want non-water-based. You want a oil-based pomade or you want a dry paste product, something that is not going to cause the hair to wet, which will cause it to revert. Can I use pomade if I don't have wax in the beginning? Absolutely! easy on the pomade. If it's a water-based pomade, and this is like a water-based wax, um, if it's a water-based pomade, even better. You're going to be fine for styling purposes and for what you're going to do there. Would this technique work on curly wavy hair? Absolutely, Joyce. That's one of the things we're talking about here. You would cut that wet, and then you would blow it out and style it dry, or he can wear a pompadour curly. Who's the uh, pop culture reference when you talk about wearing a pompadour kind of curly? There's one person that comes to mind, saw him yesterday or the other day on TV. When we think of wearing a pompadour, but wearing it with natural curly texture, who do you think of with that? There's one television character from the 90s, early 2000s that immediately comes to mind in my head or in my book or in my brain. Who do you think, guys? Like Cher and Madonna, this individual has a one-word name. He's a dude, but he's got a one-word name like Cher or Madonna. Anybody know? Prince. Prince is an interesting answer. Uh, Haley, you know what? I'll, I'll give you credit for Prince, but that's not who I was thinking of. I think this guy's still alive. Um, Fonzie. No, Fonzie wasn't necessarily wavy curly. Fonzie was definitely a blown out pomp. Okay, and Henry Winkler's definitely still alive. He's a pretty funny old guy now. 
I'm thinking Kramer. I'm thinking from Seinfeld. I'm thinking Kramer. Man, he had it all high and tall, longer at the front edge, tapered sides and back. That was absolutely a wear it naturally curly pompadour on Kramer for sure. Client has curly. Whoa! Uh, so what did somebody said here on uh, Facebook? Client has curly hair and strong cowlicks by temples and a whirl in the temple area and likes it short to a one up and over the crown. Yeah, Loretta, in that situation, Loretta over on Facebook, um, if they've got a lot of strong cowlicks or things in the crown, this idea of leaving the crown longer is a yes or a no. What kind of answer is that? Meaning, you've either got to be on one side of it or the other, and where haircutters get in trouble is sitting on the fence. You can't be sitting on the fence. Uh, Edna, I think Kramer was spelled with a K. I'm not sure, though. It doesn't matter. I knew what you meant. Um... You gotta get off the fence. Too many hair cutters in this situation are on the fence. They've either cut it short, but not short enough, or they've cut it too short for it to be long. That middle ground is where everything goes wanky. The middle ground is where you have your challenge. You've gotta get into this crown here, and you've gotta either leave it long enough to lay down, or cut it short enough that those cowlicks don't matter. Did that make sense as an answer? Who asked that? I just wanna go back. Uh, Joyce, not Carrot Top for sure. Uh, I think that was Loretta, yeah. Okay, that was, and, and Ashley said, maybe a little late to the game, so maybe this is already asked, but how do you achieve this look if they have a widow's peak or a front cowlick? Yeah, with a widow's peak or a front cowlick, then you're maybe late to the game, but that's okay, you're here. With a widow's peak, you're going to have that longer front portion, and it just won't necessarily blend. Remember where I left the disconnect here? This allows for that high corner for some styling. This can be slicked back if you want to wear that pomp slicked. You can push that flatter, and you can lay it back because you've got the length to do it. If it's popped more up, if you're wearing it a little higher, you can wear that a little bit higher, and you can even pull that corner down for a little bit of flare in the corner. Uh, but the widow's peak, no issue. If they've got a strong cowlick in the front hairline, and that's a great question, a strong cowlick in the front hairline is just going to say, which way are we pumping it? Because if the cowlick is forcing it this way, don't fight the cowlick. Use the cowlick, play with the cowlick, and go with the cowlick. But if the cowlick's on the other side popping it this way, I would have put the parting on this side and popped it over the other way. I would have done a totally opposite haircut. Don't fight that cowlick. Let that cowlick be your friend. You know, we have a good friend of the family who's got a kid who, when he was like junior high, high school, he had a wicked spinning tornado cowlick right there in the front hairline and he hated it he just hated it and back when we was younger we couldn't do anything but buzz cut him we simply cut him short we buzz cut the top and that was it good night charlie well this kid grew up a little bit this kid got a little bit older this kid went away to college and when he was away at college of course he wouldn't let anybody cut his hair except me so when he finally came back from college and the whole top had grown out, that cowlick right there had created a beautiful wave and a pomp in the front of his hair. And man, the planets lined up for this kid because he grew his hair out, he had that cowlick, and all of a sudden that high, long top front pomp was in. Not only was it in, but it looked great on him. So sometimes that cowlick works in your favor. Hard to tell on a mannequin, but is that a Caesar cut? Do you cut the sides different if you're pomping it at the sides? I'm not sure what pomping it at the sides refers to. Uh, tell me more about that. Explain a little more of that to me. But no, it by no means would this qualify as a Caesar cut in any way. That has got a lot more length through the front edge. Uh, definitely a pomp cut. Um, can you talk on product only one? Tell me what that um, try to help you out. Uh, Zach from Saved by the Bell. Yeah, okay. Uh, so you don't have to start the cut the top from the... Wait, so you don't have to slant the cut on top from the front to the back of the crown. No, you don't have to slant it. I didn't slant it. Now, I understand your question. I cut it straight back. You can slant and angle it down if you wish... That's not a right or wrong, that's a question of styling versatility, artistic discretion, creative choice. That's entirely up to you. If you want less, if you want this whole back shorter and rounded out and everything, a great idea, Ronald, would be 
to slant angle that way down in the back. The hair back here at the crown would be literally 25% the length I have here. A quarter of what I have here, maybe a, th a third of what I have there, and down into the back like that. That would be absolutely, totally slick, totally cool, and a totally acceptable option. No problems with that. I know you hate the blow dryer, but are you going to blow dry and then fine tune and texturize? The answer is I don't hate the blow dryer. The answer is I'm not going to use a blow dryer in the demo here. Would I blow this, Scott, in the, on the client in the shop? Absolutely. Would I go back and do any fine tuning if I saw there was tuning necessary? Would I go back and texturize? No. And the reason for that is on the top of a pump like this, I want the bulk. I would not go in and deliberately texturize. I use razor rotation to polish the blend in through here. And definitely after I've dried the client, there's going to be some finesse work needed, but not texturizing work on a pump like this. I'm not going to, I don't want to take bulk out of here. I don't want to take bulk out of here. So texturizing would not be on the agenda for me for this one. That's what I was thinking. Okay, awesome, thanks. All right, any other questions if you're coming to the sides? Great cut. I love the idea of using the side part for balance and directions. I haven't used that. Thank you very much. Donna, I appreciate that. Uh, if you're combing it to the sides. Okay, uh, now I understand, I believe, uh, Mike, what you're asking is the idea of if rather than having the sides clippered short, if I was pumping the top, and I wanted the sides to flare fall back. That's where I talked about having more length here if we're doing a DA. If I want the sides here, that's the square layer cut that I demoed last week. We can look at that again in another class at some point if you'd like. And the square layer video is still up further back in the history in my Facebook feed. If that's going to be valuable or important for you, definitely go back and take a look at that. But that would require leaving a lot more length to be able to fold those sides back Talk about a uh, like a 57 Chevy, although not a flat top on top, but a DA in through the back and sides. Now, I told you guys about the Jatai coupon code. We used our freestyle razors, both with standard and texture blade. Go to my Instagram, go to Ivan Zoot on Instagram, go to my links in my profile, and there is a link there for your Jatai International coupon code. Go to that link. Click on there and you can request your coupon code. Jatai will then send you a very generous coupon code to allow you shop directly on the web. That's for things like feather razor blades. That was the R type, that's the standard, that's the texture blade. We use the standard and we use the texture blade today. In our shaving class later in the week, we're going to feature the Artist Club razor blades from Feather. You get to learn a whole lot about those and we'll get to see what we can do with that. How high do you decide on the sides and back? Nicholas, that is going to depend on head shape. That's going to depend on the amount of length we want on the top. That's going to depend on the height of the parting. Is the parting going to be lower down or is the parting going to be higher up? And what is the general length we're looking for for the sides? I wanted this fairly short. This was a one and a half with a one through the bottom edge when we did it. So we went fairly short with that. And as I'm checking this out, I'm seeing one or two other things I just need to address. Just some fine tuning here. That's at the top edge of my one and a half. So I put a one guard on, I back the blade off slightly and I can peel some of that off. So yeah, how tight you go on the back and sides, that's coming up in consultation. That's gonna be a decision about what is the actual look they're looking for. My bad, it's the blow dry long and roll hair. It's the blow and roll. Yeah, it's the blow and we're talking about women's long hair that makes me crazy with a round brush. That's something I don't do, Scott. You know that, absolutely. All right, guys, any other questions, comments on anything we talked about or anything we didn't? This was the 9 o'clock Modern Pompadour class. 11 o'clock is Sweet Considerations. These are the questions you need to ask you if you're thinking about renting a suite or a chair or going out on your own. It's really the how do I start my own business in the hair business conversation. I think it's applicable to a wide range of beauty and barber professionals. Go to... Ivanzoot.com, use your coupon code, 
Stay Home 20. That's for books and tools and all that good stuff. Go to the links list and go to your Jatai coupon code. Thank you. This is the first video brought to us and sponsored by our friends at Jatai International. We're excited to have them in the family for these programs and for these presentations. Um, I've been working with Jatai for many, many years. Switchblade scissors that I used for the top of that pompadour, these, this actual scissor frame, not these blades, the blades went away a long time ago, but these actual scissor frame was in my hand in 1998 when I broke the Guinness World Records for the first time. That's the actual scissors that I did use for that. All right, guys, thank you, Scott, for sharing the coupon code. Y'all have a good morning. I'll see you back here at 11 o'clock for sweet considerations. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great day. Bye-bye.